from the perspective of the startup, mm. I was always kind of skeptical of raising money. Mm. It, it feels like people do it too quickly, too easily, um, but I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. It, when is the, when should a startup raise money? And from the perspective of the investor, when should the investor invest in a startup? Sure. Like, is there a timing thing here? Is there a, um, what, yeah, what? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a very important question because the venture capital community is only going to fund, you know, sub 1% of enterprises started in the, in the United States every year, like maybe 10 basis points of them, like one in a thousand. And, wow. and the reason is it's jet fuel. You only want to take that money if you really want to build something big and you want to build it fast. And when you put jet fuel behind a startup, as we've seen with other rockets, things can blow up and people can die. You know, it's not people literally dying, but the business can go up in smoke, yes. right? Like rockets get blown up all the time at SpaceX as part of their ambitious plans. And startups, seven out of 10 startups we invest in go to zero. Now, if you were to start the business and only build it off customer revenue and use your own money and go nice and slow and grow 10% a year, the chances of you blowing up the rocket are very low because you're riding a bicycle. Yes. Like, so you're, it's, you can go a little faster, but the bicycle can only go so fast. And once you start taking that money, the way the portfolio, the way venture capital is constructed as a, um, in the mix of like MIT or Harvard's endowments is, you know, we're going to put some money into uh, safe things. And then we're going to have these really binary things over here. And they probably put 5%. Uh, in venture capital traditionally, it's grown to 20% just as a function of how successful it's been. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Harvards of the world and MITs probably want five or 10% in venture, but it's grown to 25% because, you know, companies like Airbnb and Uber have grown so big and Tesla. But the goal is in these venture funds, we're going to invest in 30 names and one or two of them are going to return three times the capital we've deployed. So it's a $300 million fund and there's 30 names and they each got 10 million. That means one of the 10 million is going to return the fund plus. Mm -hmm. So that means it has to grow 30x and then 60x to double the fund. And you're really supposed to be doing three times cash on cash. So that $300 million fund's expectation is in 10 years to return $900 million. Mm -hmm. Triple the person's money as opposed to the stock market, which doubles your money in the same period. So you're supposed to do 25% annualized returns in order to triple the money. And maybe I have an outlying chance of four or five times the money, which does happen sometimes when you have an outlier in your portfolio like Uber or Facebook was. And what that means is the venture capitalist behavior and the game they're playing is different than you as the founder. You as the founder, you may really care about this and it dying really matters to you. Mm -hmm. And then you got a venture capitalist who's like, we're betting on 30 names. We need two of them to hit it out of the park, maybe three, and nothing else is meaningful. Mm -hmm. So now you start thinking about the game theory there. You're, you're dealing with, you know, money that is coming in that only cares about you going a hundred x. Yes, it's a whole different ball game. Whereas if you build off revenue, you don't have to do that. And if you look at a company like Com.com, we invested at five million. The next round they did was two fifty. They were so capital efficient that they grew from ten thousand dollars a month in revenue to millions of dollars a month in revenue over those four years since we invested, and they didn't raise money in between. Wow. It was unbelievable. And I've only seen this happen three or four times. So it doesn't happen all this capital efficient, meaning uh, based on customer revenue yeah. alone, plus some small amount of fundraising, yeah. you're able to go. Like, how hard is it to do that? It takes extreme product market fit. You have to have a great price for your product that has a great margin. Um, yeah. And if you're doing something in hardware, it's probably impossible because it's super capital intensive. Right, so it's probably got to be a software business. Software hardware subject. businesses take a lot more. Do venture capitals get in the way at all of the business or do or is so it, it possible depends. to get out of the way? Yeah. If you, if you get young venture capitalists who are starting their career, they're very nervous and scared because they're putting all these bets. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a very weird thing that happens. The bad news comes first. So- <laughs> yeah. Companies that don't work out go out of business immediately. Yes. So if it's not going to be Calm or Robinhood or Uber, those take seven. You know you have a, one of those great successes somewhere in your five, six, seven, eight as an investor. What is the first five years like? The first five years, you feel like an idiot because you let's say you, you make these uh, 10 bets. 
in year two, two or three of them come back and they don't have product market fit and they're out of money. Yeah. And they say, can we have more money? And you say, no, we have to go get it from somebody else because you have to prove that there's still a market for it. We may keep our pro rata. We may put a little bit in to maintain our percentage ownership, but we're not going to give you another big chunk of money. Yes. And that company dies. So now you've got 10 million, poof, up in smoke. Boom, 10 million up in smoke. So this is called the J curve where your performance goes down. And then it's only in years four or five and six it starts going up. And what you're seeing right now is the people who started like I did in 2000, you know, just 11, 12 years ago in 2009, I started investing. We all look like geniuses. Why? We're at the end of the cycle. We invested after when the stock market was on the floor after the financial crisis. And it's gone straight up since. So everybody looked, there's a couple little blips in there, but generally speaking, there hasn't been like a major crash uh, with the exception of the pandemic crash, but that bounced right back. And so, you know, it takes a decade to figure out if you're good at it. Mm -hmm. And then if the market crashes again, everybody feels like an idiot again, the cycle starts again. So you are now, as a founder, you are now inserting yourself into that casino. Yes. And now you've got all these other forces pushing and pulling and you're growing, let's say your company was growing 50%. You feel like, wow, I'm successful. I made a million dollars last year. Now I'm doing a million and a half. And, if, and the first thing a VC is gonna say to you is, how do we triple? We're, move, we're growing too slow. See, but that's like you said that beautifully, uh, is a rocket fuel. It's uh in, in a sense, it's a kind of motivation. It's a drive. I mean, it, it's a yes. positive. So if you want that. Yes. That's like, if you want that. If you want that, if you want to go to Navy SEAL school, you're going to be in pain and they're going to put that hose in your face while you're underwater with your hands tied behind your back in the pool and you're going to be choking and you, they might have to do CPR on you. And like every couple of years, tragically, somebody dies in Navy SEAL school. Yeah. Well. Doesn't you, mean we're getting rid of the Navy SEALs. Like Rocky, if he dies, he dies.